All right, hello everybody. This is Pastor Vinny Stricola from Bible Baptist Church here in Plumboro, PA. I had a little bit of mic trouble last Sunday, uh, so I have to redo uh, Sunday's sermon. And um, we were in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22. I've been preaching on the fruits of the Spirit in contrast to the works of the flesh and the two natures of, uh, of the believer. So uh, we're in uh, Galatians, chapter 5, 22. And the text is, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and that's what I'll be preaching on tonight, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Let's bow our heads for God's blessing. Uh, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, thank you, Lord, for the privilege to open up your word, Lord, and the privilege to teach it and preach it. Lord, help me here tonight and i uh, just pray that it may be a blessing to the hearers lord i thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for us and resurrecting the third day lord may you just have the preeminence and just um bless tonight's study lord as well we lift up our prayer request to you lord and we thank you and we love you in jesus name amen so what i'll be talking about is meekness and meekness is a very important fruit in the life of a christian and now uh, meekness is one of the opposites of being proud I mean, we know that pride is the first sin in existence uh, with Lucifer. You know, it's all connected with Lucifer's rebellion, the sin of pride. We know the five I will statements back in Isaiah chapter 14. Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. James 4, 6. Also, Proverbs 18, 13, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy in the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. So God commands you to hate certain things, and pride's one of them. Along with arrogance, the froward mouth, and the evil way, we are to hate things. And now, uh, we studied that when we uh, talked about love, and we know that with perfect love comes perfect hatred and, and jealousy and things of that. So the opposite characteristics of the things that God hates is meekness, okay, in, in uh Meekness is very important. And we're going to go through a couple characters of the Bible um, on who was meek and, and what could we uh, gain from that. Now, first off, Moses was very meek. Moses was very meek. Uh, Moses was one of the meekest men to walk on earth, and yet he still reproved and rebuked the Israelites. So, what the point that I really want people to get from this is with meekness does not come compromise, okay, or tolerance to sin. So, you know, meekness is not weakness. All right, and, and another thing when you're studying the fruits of the Spirit is the devil always got his, his counterpart, uh, you know, his counterfeit to the fruit. You know, like, like what, what the world tells you what is love, when in reality it's really just lust, okay? And, and what the world offers you, peace, you know, they say peace, peace, and there is no peace. So you can't get no peace from the world. You can't get no, you know, true love, you know, love from the world. You can't get true joy from the world. You know, the, joy, uh, the, the world replaces joy with happiness and things and, um, and, and things that just, you know, happen. But joy is something different than just being happy and, and, and stuff like that or having fun, okay? So uh, meekness is not weakness. And the, the world's view of meekness is just like, you know, well, let's just chill out, bro. Or like what the hippie movement was all about and just relaxing and just chilling and smoking dope and fornicating and things. And, you know, let you just, you know, dude, just chill out and let's just chill. You know, you'd call up your, your buddies back in the day. Hey, hey, man, what are you up to? You just want to chill today and things like that. You know, uh, or just like all this peace stuff. Just peace out and just, you know, chill, chill. And you want to do, you know, yoga or something like that. Uh, that's the world's idea of, of meekness. And, um, you know, that the cultural life of, of joint smoking and fornicating and meditation and, and peace and love and all that movement, that's, that's not real meekness according to the Bible. Like I said, the devil always has his counterfeits to the fruits. You know, as, as we've been going over, the devil tries to mimic those fruits, yet he distorts and perverts the true biblical meaning of each fruit of the Spirit. We will find that with meekness comes temperance and obedience. So anyway, with Moses, over there in Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, it says, Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. So Moses was very meek, all right? And, uh, and as you read through, uh, you know, the Old Testament and the books of Moses and things, that Moses was a meek man, but at the, at the same time, he wasn't afraid to rebuke and, and reprove against sin, you know. And, um, 
And another thing I want to get from this study here is that not every character in the Bible that we're going to go through is 100% of each of those fruits of the Spirit. So, like, they're not one character in the Bible that was always just meek with things. Or just, uh, uh, for example, like, you know, like David. David was very meek, too. But not all the time was he meek. Okay, David, obviously, you know, he knew how to war. He knew how to go to war and fight. And we talked about that with the world's definition of gentleness. You know, which is just turn the other cheek and, you know, don't, you know let's just take away the guns. We looked at the United Nations, the embassy over there in, uh, in New York, um, how it talked about that. You know, they have that, that, that statue with the gun tied and the knot and things. So, um, hey, baby, we're going to talk about meekness. We're talking about meekness right now. So, um, anyway, that the world's definition of gentleness is not uh, the Bible's definition of gentleness. We studied the right to bear arms and things like that. Now, David, you know, he was meek. You look at Psalm chapter 22, verse 26. It says, The meek shall eat and be satisfied, and they shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall ever, your heart shall live forever. Verse uh, Psalm twenty five nine says, "The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way." I always like that because it says that the meek he will guide, and the meek will he teach his way. And most likely, the one of the first things you got to do before you get saved, number one, obviously, is to acknowledge that you're sin. You're a sinner. Okay. Um, and really, you know, it's, it's God resisteth the proud and give grace unto the humble. So, you know, more so if you're meek, you're, you'd be easier to teach. God will be able to teach you things. You know, the three, you know, roles, so to say, when it comes to uh, reading your Bible is having a, a believing heart and a humbled mind in time well spent. In Psalm 25, 9, it says, The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. So most like if you're a meek person, you're easy to teach and God will reveal a lot of things in His Word about Himself. Uh, James, James chapter 1, 21 says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted Word which is able to save your souls. So it, James talking about receiving the Word, the engrafted Word, uh, in, uh, receive it with meekness. So that's a very important to do. And, you know, when you're listening to, uh, to preaching and, and just reading the Bible, just, uh, just go approach it in the spirit of meekness and say, Lord, correct me. Lord, reprove me. You know, Lord, I may not understand things, but I believe your word. I believe you're right. Um, so receiving the word with meekness, that's important. Uh, David also says in Psalms 25, 9, the meek will he guide in judgment and the meek he'll teach his way. And it says Psalm 37, 11, but the meek shall inherit the earth. And shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And we see, we'll, we'll see that later on with uh, our Lord and Savior on the Sermon on the Mount, ta- uh, quoting that verse. Psalm 76, 9, When God arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth, say la. Uh, Psalm 147, 6, The Lord lifted up, lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. So there's always a contrast between the meek and, and the wicked. Okay, so um, another one is Psalm 149, verse 4. The Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. So obviously David had a great deal to say um, about the meek. Now the point is, you know, each of these fruits should be manifest in a Christian's life at various times. Uh, you know, not one saint in the Bible was always 100% uh, the time meek, Okay. You know, David, uh, Moses and David were very meek, yet Moses disobeyed God by, you know, smiting the rock twice and not getting into the promised land. Uh, you know, David, he was very meek, and yet he, he, learned, he learned war. Um, he, um, and also, he, you know, he got Uriah killed and things like that in the battle, committed adultery with Bathsheba and, and things. Um, you know, one of the fruits of the Spirit is, is joy, okay, joy. And Paul didn't seem too joyful about his troubles, which came to him in Asia, over there in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 8. He says, For we, we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, and so much that we despaired even life. Okay, so that, you know, not all the time is, is everybody just going to be 100% joyful, 100% peace, or each of those characteristics of the uh, fruit of the Spirit. But I do believe that the Lord will give you each of those fruits. If you're yielded to the Holy Spirit and you pray, Lord, you know, uh, allow the Spirit to work through me in certain situations. He will give you those fruits at the right time and the right place and things. 
Um, now the next the next character I'd like to look at in the Bible uh, who was very meek was Paul. Paul was meek. And if we look over there in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 21. 2 Corinthians 4, 21. There ain't no 2 Corinthians 4, 21. Let's try 1 Corinthians 4, 21. Let's try 1 Corinthians 4, 21. Um, so here's what Paul says here. He says in 2 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 21, What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod, or in love, and in the spirit of meekness? So he's telling them, you know, how, how should he come unto them and, and, correct, uh, and correct them of, um, of a certain sin that they're doing? In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 1, it is commonly reported that there is fornication among you, and such fornication is not so much named as among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And you are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he had that done, this, done this deed might be taken away from among you. So he's kind of saying, you know, what am I going to come unto you with, with meek, you know, uh, in the spirit of meekness and love or with a rod? Now, what we're about to read here, it seems like Paul was coming at him with a rod. So sometimes, you know, um, or, or you could even say, you know, with meekness, that doesn't come with, with compromise with sin or, or tolerating sin. You still got to reprove it and rebuke it. Look what Paul says in verse 5. To deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. He he said to turn that brother over to Satan and destroy him. Now I never had to uh, I never had to do that yet. <laughs> okay, I never actually had to actually you know pray that or, or or claim that verse to where, you know, brother was so far out of bounds, uh, committing fornication or some wicked sin to where I had to just say, Lord, just destroy that guy until he gets right, and you know uh, help him repent and acknowledge it and things. But uh, Paul does say there, you know, what should I come unto you, with a rod or in love and in the spirit of meekness? So you're meek, you're still going to correct, you're still going to reprove and rebuke. It's not just like, let's just chill out and let's just have a good time, let's have fun and things like that. And that's not the case. Now Galatians uh, 6, 1, Paul says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You know, and that's another thing. You know, when you're when you're correcting another brother in Christ or something, if a, if a brother be overtaken in a fault, you know, restore such one in the spirit of meekness. Be humble about it. Don't ever think that you know you're so perfect and you got everything figured out and you're all sinless and you know you, you got to consider consider thyself also, and that comes with sound judgment. You know, in order to judge certain things, you got to take the beam out of your own eye before you can start judging the brethren. We talked about that in one of our Bible studies about um about reproving and things um, so it says restore such one in the spirit of meekness okay uh, considering thyself lest thou also be tempted you know that's tempted to fall back into flesh and things uh, now Ephesians 4 verses 1 through 3 Paul writes again I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering Forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit of the, in the bond of peace. So with all lowliness and meekness. And that's one of the first things that after you get saved, you should notice a, a, a change after the new birth. With, you know, you're, you're a lot more humble. You're a lot more, you know, you show grace. And, and you realize, you know, the Lord saved me from a, a wicked lifestyle. And He's helping me clean up, you know, sins in my life and get victory over that. And, um, you know, you're, you're called to walk worthy of the vocation. And with all lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love, you could see certain um, certain fruits of the spirit right there. The fruits of the spirit, the, the fruit of the spirit is bound to, to work in every believer, every genuine born again child of God. Now Colossians three verse twelve it says, "Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering." So there it goes again, as the elect of God. Uh, beloved, bowels of mercy. Okay, put on, therefore. What to put on? Kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, um, uh, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And obviously, with meekness is gonna is gonna come with, um, you know, uh, your forgiveness towards other people. And if you're a meek person, you know, considering thyself and things like that, you're gonna realize, man, I mess up all the time. 
you know, surely I can overlook some faults that, you know, that the brethren are doing or, or, or whatever. Forgiveness should be, should be easy for the child of God. You shouldn't hold no grudges or, or no, uh, if we have any quarrel against any. Because Christ forgave us, okay? And so, and so we ought to do the same. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. So obviously what you can see there also is what follows meekness and long-suffering and kindness and forgiveness is charity, which is love and action. That's your behavior. So meekness obviously is something within the inside, but it manifests itself on the, out, on the outside, on, on your behavior, on your character. Now, 1 Timothy 6, 11 and 12, Paul says, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. But to follow after those things. And now right after that, it says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So obviously what follows meekness is, to, is fight, okay? The, you know, fight the good fight of faith. Meekness, once again, isn't just, you know, letting your guard down or, 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 or breaking down some, some walls and, and things like that and just allowing and tolerating sin and putting up with it. No, meekness, the next thing Paul says after that, after you follow those things, is you got to fight the good fight of faith. And over there in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25 and 26, he says it again, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive at his will. So obviously, uh, you know, part of one of the fruits of the Spirit when we're witnessing, doing personal work with people and, and door knocking and things like that and just one-on-one -on -one time with people is the work to give them to the, the truth uh, in, in meekness. You know, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Be humble. You know, because the Bible says, you know, knowledge puffs up. So it could come a time where it's just, you're all just giving intellectual things and spitting off all these facts and all that. But they've got to see in you the spirit of meekness, this, the, uh, the humbleness. And this isn't of my own will, but it's what God shows. It's God's word. So I always point it back to, to the book. Another one is Titus chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. Paul says, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. You know, now, of course, meekness, you know, doesn't come just to compromise and tolerate sin, but obviously, you know, if you're meek in, in character and your behavior, you're not going to go around punching people out or nothing like that, too, because they don't believe the same way you do or, or different doctrinal beliefs and things like that. Um, let the Word of God do the convicting. Give them Scripture. I believe that. You know, you can never go wrong with giving too much scripture. Uh, showing all meekness unto all men. And then Paul says, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers, lusts, and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful and hating one another. Those are the complete opposites of the fruit of the Spirit. The opposite of meekness and gentleness, you know, being a gentleman, is being foolish, disobedient, deceived, Serving divers, lusts, and pleasures, living in malice and envy and being hateful. You know, we are to keep meekness and gentleness in the mind. We're to keep that in the mind, part of the renewing of the mind. Uh, Peter was uh, also meek. Okay, that's one of the, the, the next person I like to talk about was Peter was meek and he taught meekness. Now, that may be hard to believe, uh, you know, in the beginning because Peter, you know, he didn't seem like he, he was such a meek person, you know. Um, you know, saying, you know, telling the Lord over there in Acts chapter uh, 10, you know, the Lord said, go ahead, eat these things, Peter. And he says, no, not so, Lord, no way. You know, Lord, I'd tell him three times. You know, we know Peter de denied the Lord three times. And we know that when, when Jesus was expounding to him about the gospel, how that he should, you know, get delivered up under the chief priests and, and things like that in Jerusalem and be killed and resurrected the third day, Peter gripped up the Lord and said, you know, be it far from thee, Lord. These things shouldn't happen to you. And the Lord said, hey, get behind me, Satan. You know, uh, but it, when you read Peter's epistles, the great thing I love about you know First and Second Peter is how you see Peter's growth in those epistles. How Peter just he, he just grew, and that's I believe one of the themes of those epistles is growing. And um, and and Peter has has uh, uh, has some interesting things about meekness. First Peter chapter three verse fifteen. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So Peter says again, you know, when if any man's talking to you about, you know, they see you're living a different way and things, you're not, you know, running with the same crowd and 
you're, you're serving the Lord, you're, you're posting Bible verses and handing out tracts and witnessing on the, uh, you know, on any opportunity. Um, you know, there, when it comes to dealing with those people, that's going to say uh, in, in the spirit of meekness and fear. You alright, Ben? You alright? Everything cool? Alright. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. Well, it's a perfect part. <laughs> And also, Peter has something interesting about meekness when it comes uh, to the ladies. And we have to keep in mind, that obviously, that Paul wasn't married before. Um, you know, he didn't have a wife or anything, but Peter did. And, um, you know, it, it would do well to take heed what the Holy Spirit told Peter. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 through 4, he says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, that they may... Also, uh, but th that they also may be without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of plating of the hair and wearing of gold and putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. You know, every woman obviously should um, see, uh, see Jesus Christ inside. Every woman has Jesus Christ living inside of them. And let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is uh, in the sight of God of, of a great uh, a great price. So Peter writes right there um, uh, for for the ladies and, and wives especially that that they are to be meek and of a quiet spirit. And and, and he says that God in, in the sight of God that's a that's of great price. You know, and the opposite of a meek and quiet woman is a is a brawling woman. You know, Proverbs 21, 9, it's better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. The opposite of a meek and quiet woman is a contentious and angry woman. Proverbs 21, 19 says it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. Um, so a meek and quiet spirit in a woman in the sight of God is of a great price. Um, so if you have yourself a 1 Peter chapter 3 woman, then count yourself blessed. Um, and and an another one, uh, lastly, about the fruits of the uh, the fruit of meekness, we have the character in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah sixty one verse one it says, "The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound." Now, our Lord Jesus Christ was meek. He was meek. You know, and, and right after the Lord was baptized by John and then tempted out in the wilderness by, uh, by Satan, Jesus enters into his public ministry and goes out preaching in, in, to the multitudes and the synagogues and things. And one of his first big sermons that he ever preached uh, to the multitudes, he, he says over there in Matthew chapter 5, and look what he mentions. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So one of the uh, the first fruits of the spirit that, that the Lord mentions in that sermon, you know, later on, um, uh, that they know to be the fruit of the spirit. But Jesus says, "Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth." He's quoting what David said over there in the Book of Psalms. Um, then he goes on, "Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness." Now, uh, you know, one of his biggest sermons that, that he taught it began with the teaching of meekness. That was one of the one of the biggest things. And uh, you got to say that the fruit of the Spirit, or that fruit of the Spirit, must be pretty powerful in the Christian's life. He starts out one of the that characteristics is, you know, blessed are the meek. You know, um, another one is Matthew 21, verse 5, you know, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. He says, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and the colt, the foal of an ass. So there goes our Lord, saying he was meek. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Now what comes with meekness? Learn, learn of me. You know, that's, what comes with meekness is rest. Resting in the Lord. And I like how the Lord says, learn of me. Because Paul says that also in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. He says to some Christians, uh, you know, that they have not so learned Christ. You gotta learn Christ. And the more you learn about your Savior, the more you you will find rest in Him. Uh, you know, you will start to think about what He wants you to do in in certain situations, and allow the Holy Spirit to manifest certain fruits of the Spirit at the right time. You know, the the Spirit of meekness and things. And we sing that hymn. There's not a friend. Uh, there's no friend like Him that's so high and holy. 
No, not one. No, not one. And yet, no friend is so meek and lowly. No, not one. No, not one. You know, that hymn right there, it, it, it really emphasizes uh, that characteristics of, of, the, of the meekness and lowliness of our Lord. And Jesus says, uh, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Now Jesus expresses his lowliness by his temperance. And that's one of the next fruit we'll be talking about um, next week, is the fruit of temperance. Okay, And... Um, and, and, and the Lord expresses His lowliness by His temperance and nature and expresses His gentleness by His behavior and actions. Now, obviously, a close relative to meekness is humility. And uh, being humbled is a twofold trait. It manifests itself in the heart and in its behavior. Um, you know, perhaps one of the greatest examples of uh, humility and meekness is found in um, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 through 23. He writes, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was found, uh, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. Remember, he was meek. He laid down his life for the sheep. He willingly gave it. Uh, and when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. And any time the Lord could have pulled himself down from the cross, he could have cursed out, you know, the Romans and things, and and just said, "Be all be damned." But yet he was dying for their for their sins, the just for the unjust. And one of the biggest things of meekness is without the Lord's meekness, and His temperance and willingness to obey, we wouldn't have our salvation. So meekness is is uh, is very important. Um, you know, His humility is not only displayed by His physical restraint, but also by. Uh, but also his emotional, heartfelt compassion toward the revilers. Now that's something. You know, we read over there in Romans that Christ died for the ungodly. He died for his, uh, for his enemies. And his meekness brought us salvation. So thank the Lord for that. Now, uh, meekness is a strength, okay? And we must remember that Jesus, being meek, did not mean that he was helpless, okay? You know, after all, we're talking about the omnipotent Lord, all right? And, uh, whose authority and dominion is infinite and, and everlasting. He didn't need help. He could be lowly in heart because he had the victory, because he had eternal power. So meekness is not weakness by any means. Um, now, a, a chapter that I'd like to close on is in the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. We're going to close on here. And what, it, what I like about this passage here is Christ's meekness is what led to his obedience and his exaltation. And we have to follow after the meekness, which in turn will help us obey what God wants us to do. So look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Paul writes, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The Bible says we are to have the mind of Christ. And you can have the mind of Christ over certain things and what the Lord wants you to do, obviously, if you don't read His Word. So Paul says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, you know, the, the fullness of, of the Godhead dwells bodily in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. Being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And obviously that verse has changed in all the modern Bibles. It's a great verse on the deity of Christ. He thought it not robbery to be equal with God. There's times where the Lord did exercise His deity as being the great I Am and the Almighty. The Lord did not think it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion of, as a man, he humbled himself. There goes being humbled. He humbled himself. And, and one of the close synonyms with meekness is, is just being humble. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death. So there you can see from him being humbled and being meek, just like we read over there in, in Psalms, that the Lord shall, shall teach the meek. So, you know, if you're meek and you got the spirit of meekness, you'll be easier to teach and, and, and help you grow in your relationship with God and your, your knowledge of the Word and things. Because with, hum, with humbleness and meekness comes obedience. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So thank the Lord from Him being humbled, Him being meek. You know, that, that led to our salvation. That's a, that's a powerful fruit. Now in verse 9, Wherefore God 
also hath highly exalted him. So you start off being meek, then you start obeying. Then comes exaltation. You get exalted. God, you know, you do what's pleasing in the sight of God. And that lays up treasures and rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. Wherefore God has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So now that was the, the fruit of meekness. We're going to close on uh, uh, Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. And the next fruit we'll be talking about next week is temperance. Okay, so you look at meekness. And what follows that is temperance, and they're 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 very they're very close to each other, okay. And you see that you know J Jesus, um, he was very meek and things, and very temperate. And they're they go hand in hand. And um, for a practical instruction, you know, you should receive you know the instructions from the Lord in His Word. We should receive those meekly and submissively, you know, not in in the spirit that that Simon Peter had in the beginning when he was saying, you know, no, not so, Lord, or you know, be it far from Thee, Lord, or you know, thou shalt never wash my feet. Um, the correct response uh, should be of a, of, a, of a meek and humble spirit and saying, Lord, teach me. You know, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. That's, one of, that's very important. And the, the spirit of meekness uh, goes a long way. And uh, it's one of the fruits that should be manifest in, in the Christian's life. And um, it'll help us with our fellowship with God overall. So next week we'll be talking about temperance. And uh, let's just bow our heads for closing prayer. Uh, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for um, giving us the, the fruit of the Spirit, Lord. I just pray that you help us manifest these fruit, Lord, in, in, in various ways in our lives. Um, give each one of us, uh, give each one of them, Lord, to, uh, at the correct situation and circumstance um, that, that we may face, Lord. Uh, just help us, Lord, become obedient and, and just be humbled in the mind and, and not be puffed up, Lord. Keep us low um, that you just may be uh, lifted up, Lord, and have the preeminence. We thank you so much, Lord, for dying on the cross for us and shedding your blood and resurrecting the third day, Lord, for our salvation. Uh, we thank you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.